Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It is currently 51 degrees and sunny outside. And still. Does it make you want to wear a sweater? Yes. And curl up by a fire? No, it makes me want to go plant things because it's so nice. Yeah. This is when I want to be outside. The 10 day looks really good. I feel like our garden is going to love it. Yes, it's going to. I think the highest temperature is 83. Um, but that's just one day and the rest are in the 70s and tomorrow's supposed to be like 66 is the high or 67. Do you feel like this is, uh, our garden is the least stressed this year than any year? For sure. Living here? Yeah, for sure. It's been such a wonderful summer. Yeah. And the native landscape, you guys, it's yeah. wild. We took, uh, my, well, my dad kind of took us all out to the hills on Sunday, organized a trip to go fishing. And uh, so we had to drive, we drove above Baker City, the mountains above Baker City. And so about an hour and a half away. And the native landscape, like this high desert landscape was full of ditch daisies, mm -hmm. just full. It looked like fields, like right. up on these hills that are usually just dry brown hills with nothing on so them. This time of year, for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're green in the spring, like a lot of places, but, but they get real brown. Real brown. And there was like a little of haze of green. And then there was these daisies i mean just these super tall beautiful ditch daisies everywhere honestly they look kind of like the proven winners daisies yeah i think that's probably what they were trying to go for is a really? daisy that like that blooms like those do yeah. but has more of a compact like tidier habit sure. because the native ditch daisies are a little like they're a little wild they're real pretty out in their native landscape but yeah. for a, like a home garden situation they're a little bit unruly but it was just, we were it texting each other from our cars. Water yeah. This year. My mom was texting me from their car, like, are you seeing this right now? Yeah. I was trying to take video. Maybe we can pop some of it up on the screen. But we were moving, so it's pretty bad. Pretty bad video, but it's, it's just gorgeous. But anyway, we could just go on and on about that. I wonder how many people can even relate to the fact that we normally see nothing. Yeah. You know, when, when you travel anywhere from our town, mm -hmm. there's just nothing. Right. You just look out and it's just brown yeah. rolling brown it looks uh, like there, soft. there's rivers and stuff yeah. so you will see some trees along river bank river banks or some growth and then there's a lot of farming obviously yes but um but typically the native landscape is just barren yeah there's nothing that grows except for a little Great sage basin, brush yeah sagebrush mm -hmm. so when we see something growing natively we're like what <laughs> yeah. it's a native plant <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's really pretty. Anyway, let's jump into the first video. Setting up a weather station, peach harvest, and planting Russian sage. So I got a bunch of our peaches harvested, planted Russian sage, and then Aaron and I set up the, what is the variety? Not variety. The Tempest. Brand. Tempest. Uh, by Weatherflow? Maybe that's wrong. Uh, but I think it's Weatherflow. Has it been staying, like, is it doing a good job? I yeah, haven't downloaded so the app yet. Yeah, so in the video, I didn't actually have it connected properly. Uh, I thought I did, but it was it was just telling me what, like our town's weather is based on, I don't know, whatever's at the it airport. It matched maybe. our, like our phone weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got a little notification being like, Hey, you should finish setting up your Tempest. And I was like, I thought I did. <laughs> so I, it was really simple, you know, coming in here and just like finishing the process. And now it is reporting. And in the last week we've had one lightning strike oh. nearby. And I mean, it didn't like strike the Tempest, but it was like, <laughs> It caught one lightning strike, uh -huh. um, which I don't know if it just like catches a flash. Or I don't how know. It... I mean, it's pretty open. We have yeah. it. It looks like it's blocked by the barn, but it's like right in between where it's going to get the wind because it gets it right between the barn and the greenhouse. Like yeah. It gets the south, um, at least from that direction. It's been really mild the last week that it's been on. Yeah. So there's really nothing to report. It's just kind of like every day it gets up to close to 80 or around 80 mm -hmm. and goes down to 50 or, you know, oh. whatever at night. Speaking of weather, really quick, two things. Is it still still supposed to rain tomorrow? No. High is 65, though. And our lowest temp in the next 10 days, 43. I love that. <laughs> I love it. Okay. First question from Patricia Peterson. Laura, what makes you decide to use an auger or a shovel when you plant? I've been noticing that question quite a lot because I have been using a shovel more only because... It seems like all of our flower beds have all been nicely mulched mm -hmm. at this point. Like Paul and Bethany have been really keeping them nicely mulched. Whenever you use an auger, it just flings dirt everywhere. And our dirt, when it goes on top of the compost, the compost stays that nice dark brown color. Our native soil, you've seen it, it's white powder. So you get this dirt on top of the compost and you don't ever get it all back around the plant. So it just leaves like this big ring of white crummy looking soil around each one of the new plants, which does not set the plants off to look really nice. 
So if you use a shovel, you can scoot the mulch or the compost out of the way, dig your hole, and I put the excess uh, dirt in the plant can, and I try to do it very tidy. One, to respect Paul and Bethany's job that they've already done, and then two, it's just a lot less work afterward, I suppose. Yeah. If you're doing a large number of plants, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the auger is yeah. just... I was just going to say, I mean, get ready for it, because we're going to do bulbs here soon, and yeah. I'll be rocking the, the auger pretty... Pretty much for all of those, I'm guessing. Uh, Stuart Smith said, "I love watching your channel. I've learned so much, but would you would, but would love to know how to get the clean edges on your garden beds and stop the grass from growing into them. Just edging it every single week. That's what we do. Same as mowing. You're basically just mowing it vertically with mm -hmm. a trimmer. Yeah. KKW said, Alberta versus Snow Beauty White Peach. Which one is sweeter and tastier? Oh, geez, I don't know. They're both." excellent if you want one i guess i haven't canned the snow beauty white peach so i don't know how that one holds up in that situation but for fresh eating they're both amazing they're both freestone um yeah sweet mm, they're so good garden therapy said the pink colors at thir minute 13 they really stand out what are they they do stand out they stand out more than anything we've ever planted <laughs> ever they're the super tunia vista jazzberry they're like electric is yeah. that what you'd say? Like just neon electric paint. Feels like that uh, they're like one of the most successful super tunias that we've ever planted. Like one of. Yeah. I mean, there's always bubble gum. Yeah. We did that though. And then, um, you know, you want to try different things. And I've been kind of wanting to do bubble gum again. But, you know, even bubble gum, um, you know, we've had times where we plant it and, you know, you'll get like a white, like uh, some of them will fade you know, mm -hmm. later in the season. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not like all perfectly pink. Whereas this, Solid. zero fading. Yeah. Like none of them, they're all the same color. Yeah, so true. So from that perspective, I feel like, I mean, it's one of the one of the strongest Super Tunias you can buy in our experience. Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow, same. Like, yeah. Like color uniformity. Like, I like the saffron finch better. Oh, well, I do too, because it's got a bigger bloom and it's got a little bit of a white margin-ish, mm -hmm. so it kind of has that glow and gives mm -hmm. it a multidimensional look, but they're all, they all are the same as well. Um, mini Vista Yellow has smaller, obviously, because it's a mini. Vista has smaller blooms and they're like a little more sharp looking, mm -hmm. like a little more pointy yeah, blooms, yeah, yeah, yeah. if that, like maybe a little bit more cupped than the saffron finch is like this big, you know, big, beautiful bloom. Bloom to foliage ratio? On all on of the, them. Well, on all, yeah, on all of them. Hoopla, uh, Viva, Vivid? Vivid. Vivid Orchid. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good one too. I mean, it's not in my normal color. I mean, I don't know, it's pink and white, but that high contrast of the pink and white, I usually don't. I'm not drawn to that, but they look amazing yeah. out in the garden. Oh my goodness. Oh. Jenna Munger said, could you compare and contrast the pros and cons of Russian, Russian sage versus Nepeta for purple blooms? Or should I just treat myself and get both for my garden? What do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> <laughs> treat, treat yourself for sure. Treat, treat yourself 2011. Oh my gosh, that seems so, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Nepeta will give you earlier blooms. It also gives you a little bit more uh, versatility in terms of size because you can get the smaller ones, cat's pajamas that stay very low, so you can put it toward the edge of a border. As opposed to Russian sage, I don't really know a lot. I've got one variety that I can't even remember the name of that I planted by the pond that stays like 18 inches, which is the smallest Russian sage I've ever planted. The one I use the most is denim and lace, which wants to get like two, two and a half feet tall and wide. Uh, so in terms of Russian sage, that's pretty compact. Uh, but still not like an edge of a border plant. Your Nepeta, so it'll bloom early. You cut it back, it'll bloom again, sometimes three times. Your Russian sage will come up, start blooming midsummer, and bloom through the rest of the season. So you're kind of, I mean, there are pros and cons for each. Nepeta get more maintenance because you do have to shear it back or not. I mean, there's some we didn't shear back and it's blooming and looking pretty. Uh, Russian sage, it's once a year cut back and that is it. They both like it dry. They both like full sun. They both have kind of the same color palette. Kimberly said, please elaborate on how you decrease slash cut off the water on the Russian sage when they are in the same bed and on the same drip lines as the other plants that need more water. Do you cut the line, add a valve that can be turned off, remove emitters? That would be helpful to know. 
So what we do is we either uh, replace the brown drip with black, like you can cut a section out, like I did around that spruce that I planted. There was two rows of brown drip line that had emitters in both runs. So I just cut one out and replaced it with solid black so that line was not emitting any water just for the area around that spruce, but I left the one. So it was still getting some. Um, so you can just shift drip lines over, like if you have the ability to kind of pop them up and scoot them away from the plants, so you can do that. You can uh, cut them out completely so long as it doesn't wreck the rest of your line, uh, that sort of thing. If we're using individual emitters, definitely you can change. Usually we start with two gallon per hour emitters and then we can cut them out and put in ones or half gallons as the plant establishes. It needs less. Uh, Liz Bonfigli, 4656, said, do you grow any nut trees, almonds, pecans, walnuts? We do not on our property. I do, I'm interested in trying almonds. Yeah. I mean, the only tree I'm really familiar with is the Hall's Hardy, which I don't know. And maybe those of you who have tried them can speak to this more than I can. But the flavor, I don't know that the flavor is top notch on that variety. But it's a hardy one that does well in our area. And the blooms, you guys, the blooms on that tree, they're so beautiful uh, so it's something definitely worth looking into especially for the new the dirt lands <laughs> we yeah. could we pop some out there and then get some spring color and possibly some production out there uh, walnuts our neighbor has a walnut tree I don't know that I don't know I'm not really super interested in growing walnut I'm well, just kind of messy sort of bit. okay next video is propagating strawberries in my green stock oh it was hot yeah. That's like what I remember about that video. It was 109 in the greenhouse that day. Oh, it was so, so warm. But we had just moved, Paul and, and, and Aaron moved the green stock that was full of the strawberries from by the orchard. They moved into the greenhouse area because one, we wanted it closer so it's easier to, it's just closer for when we need to winter it. Because I don't think I'm going to winter it like straight outside. We might move it though to the other high tunnel that's not going to be heated. Because I do want to make sure they get a... A, a dormant period yeah and we usually heat the well we have been heating this how are you gonna get water out there well we'll have to hand water it oh. just every two three weeks it's not like that big of a deal i say that but you know i have a hard time when getting in here to water things trudging through the snow yeah we'll see we'll see what happens either way it was closer to the this greenhouse because it was the only thing out by the orchard that we had to hand water and even though it only takes one minute to fill up the reservoir at the top and then it self waters that the right word it waters itself kind of from that reservoir yeah, it trickles down it distributes the water itself yeah. uh it's still something that you had to remember to go out there and do and it's like way out of the way <clears throat> you know i saw somebody commenting about how they they had read reviews about how the water like didn't trickle down properly we've never experienced that have you mm -mm. where it didn't hit all the pockets no. maybe um you know how you were saying when you set it up, you make sure that the holes yes. line up? The little water tray that you put on top of each one, I mean, it does have holes. Yeah. So you do want to make sure that that hole lines up with that planting pocket. Yeah. So maybe, you know, that's a thing that we It'd do that other people are forget. not doing. Yeah. We've never had an issue where they're not watering properly. Right. So... So either way, we've had, had that one full of strawberries in the greenhouse, and then we had the other green stalk that I had planted seeds in, uh, carrots, which we got beautiful carrots out of there. Carrots, uh, radishes, cabbage, I had some tomatoes and basil in there, but it was looking a little, a little rough for the end of the season. So cleaned it out, and I decided just to put that one right next to the strawberry one, and then all of those runners from the strawberries, I just dragged them over and put them on in the planting pockets, and they are starting to produce roots. I clawed around in there right. yesterday. Um, so that's exciting. So we're going to propagate from the one green stock an entire new green stock full of strawberries. So I just kind of went through the life cycle of strawberries, some uh, container growing tips and so forth in that video. Rebecca said, why not just root in water? Can they handle that? Probably. But that would be a pain because you want to keep them connected to the mother plant if you can. Um, so I, yeah, you'd have to like tie baggies around them. It's just easier to do soil. I hardly ever water propagate anything because it's a pain. I think the step, like skipping that step and just rooting straight into soil, it's less upset to the plant. And I think I've had such good luck with it that way. Uh, Nina said, will you ever change out that soil completely or will you just recharge it with the berry tone? Probably just recharge it with the, well, see, the thing about the strawberries that I have in the original green stock, they have a two to three year peak life cycle. 
Typically a strawberry has a five to six year total life cycle, but only two or three of it's very productive. So we're gonna be cleaning that out every two to three years if we should decide to keep strawberries in there and replacing with fresh ones anyway. And at that point they'll get fresh soil, but in the meantime, berry tone. Uh, Melinda said, how are Aaron's avocado trees doing? Yeah, how are they doing? Have you checked on them? No, I haven't. <laughs> the little one has perked back up. It's still like a little, uh, the big one still looks every bit as wilted as it did the first day. So I don't know. I mean, it might just be working on roots and it might defoliate and then push new ones. That's what we can hope for. It's not dead. No, it's not dead. It's still just, it's chilling. And I mean, it's been hot in there and it's cooling off. So it'll get a little bit easier for it, I think. But Yeah. Denise said, what is the flower growing under the table? That is a zinnia that just seeded itself down there and it just happened to catch water, you know, from, that was dripping from other plants above it. And then we just continued to give it a little water every day. Now, I don't think there's any plants. I don't, right now I can see in there. Oh, there is plants in there now. You guys should see it. It's full of fall stuff. It's so pretty in there right now. Uh, Vicki said, when overwintering strawberry plants in a garage or other covered structure, do you need to water them? Yes. So you don't want the soil to get bone dry. You don't want it to stay super wet either. Usually we do an every two week watering schedule. That's what we did down at the garden center. That's what we try to do here every two to three weeks and just sprinkle a little water in there so that they don't completely dry out. Penny said, I'm so going to try this. Excited to know that the seascapes are a great variety. Out of curiosity, what is your opinion of the buried treasure red strawberries? I love the idea of the red flowers. So I've grown a lot of buried treasure strawberries, pink, red, and white. I had one year there that was just amazing with them. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like I was just getting loads of huge berries that were good flavor. The next year, they were like buttons, like little tiny buttons. And um, they didn't have a really great flavor. And I don't know, they're not really meant to be a strawberry produce, I mean, they are a strawberry producing plant, but they're meant to be m used more for ornamental purposes, for the color of the flower. The dangling berries look really pretty out of a container. Uh, but in terms of like, if you want strawberries for production, for canning, freezing, that's not really the variety that I would probably go for. Definitely for the pretty blooms though. Colleen said, checking this out online, do you prefer the original or the leaf version of the planter? I downloaded the info from Greenstock and trying to figure out which to order. I think uh, I've ever just tried the original, right? Yeah. I don't think I've tried the leaf. I think That's the, a smaller... the leaf, yeah, is uh, more squat. Which you could do with strawberries because they're a shallow rooted plant. You don't need a super deep pocket for those. Uh, I do like the versatility of the pocket for our area. The more soil that is in a container, the least likely they are to dry out. So that's something to consider. Um, they stay a little cooler, the roots do, if they have a deeper reservoir of soil. Also, it gives you the ability to grow things that might need a little bit more room. And it, I mean, we grew root crops, carrots. If you live in a rainy area, it might be nicer to have a smaller pocket. True. Yeah, it's totally climate and like situational, yeah. situationally based, I guess. Luna said, could you use a rooting hormone and disconnect from the mother plant altogether? Yeah, you could, and I did I did do some, let me show you. So this is one of the ones that I disconnected, and it's not like, it's not dead. I probably need to give it a little bit of water. Um, it's not as easy on the plant, because if you keep that baby connected to the mother plant, the mother plant's still sending energy to this little baby and keeping it alive while this one can focus on root production. If you cut off that source, then it's just gonna be a little bit more difficult, which in a lot of cases it will, like the top will kind of wither and die off, but it's already got roots and it will push new ones. So I've had decent luck doing it this way, probably better if you use a rooting hormone, um, but definitely better just to keep them connected if possible. But we're hormone free over here. Are we? I just see it on packaging. Uh oh. <laughs> That seems like a very educated thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next video was September Garden Tour Part One. Was that an hour long? No, I think it was like four, uh, somewhere in the forties, oh, maybe fifties. Yeah, it's close may as well hour. have been an yeah. hour long. We ended up breaking it up into two videos, as we usually do. I don't know why we set out thinking. Oh, I do. I set out thinking I'm going to do this whole thing all in one tour, and then in the middle it's of it, Aaron's big. like, "We have to." We, have we to could break split this it up. up. We could easily split it up even more than and spend part more one time. And two. On, yeah. But I don't know, like that many days in a row. I don't know how much you guys like want to sit there for. Well, tours. yeah, like the pond area, you didn't hardly even talk about any of the plants right. around the back. Yeah. So if you really went one by one right. and started talking about things and your thoughts on them, which we may do here soon because they're Pedro and his guys. They came yesterday and they're so 
wonderful to work with. So they were, uh, they brought samples of the sand, different colors of sand we could do in between the stones. And they were like custom mixing sands to see if we could get like the right color. And they really want us to be pleased with it. Uh, but they're gonna finish the sand today and then we'll remulch around the whole walkway area. And then that area will be kind of like, like as far as our plans were for it. Yeah, buttoned, buttoned up. up. Yeah. I will just continue planting around it. And you know, I did get in the pond night before last and I groomed everything up again because the lily that lily it's a foxfire I think it just grows like crazy <laughs> and I figured out a way to groom everything without having to get into the deepest part ah. so the water just is above my knees I can like oh, reach nice. everything from kind of the same spot hold on just one second Monica's calling me okay I can't remember where I was at except for the Monica's call we just arranged for me to come over and we're gonna do a update tour for you guys and show you what it looks like, we're gonna do a little bit of planting. I'm actually excited to see how it looks. Me too, because it's been a, a minute since I've seen it too. Well, since the grass has been like, yeah. and they, I think Nick just mowed it today, so it's all fresh and I'm excited. Okay, so Lori said, I love watching your videos every day, thank you. Question, is the cardboard still under the mulch in the area in the back of the pond? I'm trying to think of it, or I'm thinking of trying it in one of my areas, just wondering what your thoughts were and would you do it again? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't think it's still there, it's disintegrated. Uh, maybe. You could probably find remnants. Maybe. Yeah. But it certainly worked really well for surprise. I mean, we just did it to kill the grass. Basically, yeah. we layered that cardboard on top of the grass and then a bunch of compost. And I just saw somebody post about how cardboard is bad. Uh. <laughs> anyway, it worked well for us. We will do that again up in our front garden. I feel like it is um, such a good option in mm -hmm. so many ways. Okay. Saint ZK123 said, I've heard you can plant vine crops such as cantaloupe and watermelon on trellis. Have you thought about doing this? Um, yes, you can. You absolutely can. The only thing you have to think about is the weight of those melons. So you have to support them somehow. And you can do like, a lot of people do like nylon kind of things. Mm -hmm. Like they'll put nylons around the bottom and then tie it to the trellis. So it kind of like cradles that fruit. But it definitely a good way. I haven't seen people do it like a <laughs> great big watermelon. That would be really hard to do but like for cantaloupe and things that stay a little bit smaller and a lot of people will do gourds and squash and things like that it's a great way to grow vertically so you save your safe oh sell, save yourself a bunch of space on the ground oh, you should see our raised bed garden oh. why did i do that i don't know every time you let that kind of stuff grow i'm like what were it's, you thinking it's kind of fun and it's kind of also i have called it that the sweet romance lavender is gonna die. Nope. And you have said, no, it's not gonna, you even got mad at me one time because I brought, <laughs> brought it up, but I just want it, like a record of it, and that the I vine crops are, are gonna kill the sweet romance. And that's what I think. It was already on its way out on its Oh own. geez, <laughs> it was not, it was thriving. I don't, th I don't think it's gonna kill it, but uh, definitely not something you'd wanna keep there forever and probably shouldn't have done but two you probably will two, no probably should have done two hills in each three by four raised bed it's just a complete carpet of vines but the cantaloupe i mean they're just growing like crazy and producing like crazy rose smith said do you leave the plants in the hay racks until they die or do you remove them to plant something else so many beautiful plants can't believe how much work you've done on this property and the food production too very nice i uh, will leave them there until frost probably takes them then we'll clean them out and we might take them off the fence or... yeah we'll take them we'll take them all the way down do you, do you think so you yeah. won't leave them throughout? we'll store them in the barn yeah they'll look kind of crummy if we leave them out and empty all winter yeah, yeah. i mean it's like a it's easy to remove one them. hour project probably well, to they take them slip all down. right off of the fence yeah. and then a lot of times like those a lot of those cocoa fiber liners are new this year so we can use them again next year you kind of just like like turn them inside out pop the soil out yeah and i wonder if we can just like roll up if we cut the the drip roll it up and just then roll it up and then bring it out next year just put a connector blow you know, out right the hard we... water that's plugging all of the ones yeah, at the end yeah. well i mean we've it's open on one end oh well, it it's got one of those little kink you know things in the end so just open it up flush it out and then we'll would... put new Quarter inch. What would happen year. if we just ran a long row of brown? It wouldn't be very efficient. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Because that quarter inch is just not. Because they would hit at odd spots, and and there is like a decent amount of sp you can't tell it now because everything's so overgrown. There's a decent amount of space. There's a lot of space yeah. between. Yeah, you're right. And so you'd have water dripping in between, yeah. and that feels like it's wasteful. Yeah. 
All right. Gary Frost said, what was the name of the music at the beginning of your video? Oh, you did. So Aaron edited the tours. Um, Ken's been on jury duty <laughs> the last <laughs> couple weeks, but he's still been working and helping us out. But, you know, Aaron's had to do a little bit of editing to also kind of fill the gap. But, um, but yeah, what was that music? It was beautiful. I don't know. I get music through um, Epidemic Sound, I think is what it's called. And I, I uh, yeah, just that was so, found was a song pretty... I liked and... Well, you got the drone up at the perfect time, too. Like the sun kind of like peeking through the yeah. trees and then that music. Well, just... I actually got it up twice during the day. Did you? Yeah, because it was a little bit... I couldn't get every area with the sun so low in the sky. Uh -huh. But it was pretty at the very beginning. It was. Oh. Uh, Leah said, holy smokes, what was the critter at 3232? I think it was a big fat squirrel, but not sure. Oh, yeah, that, that, I see it. I'm like scanning the old picture. Um, yeah, that is a squirrel. Squirrel activity has been pretty large in our garden. Uh, wildlife activity as a whole has been pretty big time in our garden this year. It's really fun to see. Um, every time I walk to the pond, in fact, I took a video last night because I know when I walk to a certain spot, two frogs will jump up and swim away from that, that edge. So fun. Uh, JH said, I love your pond and yard so much. All of it is stunning. I was wondering how hard you can prune your elderberry. Hard. You can prune it hard. You probably can't kill it unless you like get an excavator at and least dig here. the whole thing out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, remember um, at Tim and Alyssa's house when we were starting that makeover and they had that elderberry planted right in front of the house. Yeah. And we shaved it off at ground right. level and it just came back. Came back. Yeah. Real it pretty. came back like vigorous. Like, oh, yeah. thanks for the prune. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all fresh now. Yeah. <laughs> Truth be told said, will we ever see you play the piano? <laughs> Drop a baby ground by the pond. And Miss Laura in a sweeping gown playing classical music. That is, that's the way to do a Halloween fantasy episode with the fog machine underneath it. Yeah, I do have go. a fog machine too. It'd be a lot of work to move the piano. I would never move that piano no. <laughs> outside of the house. I love that. I've actually been playing it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, why won't you film yourself playing it? Because. Because why? Oh. That's not a, that's not a I reason. I never <laughs> like to perform that sort of thing in front of people. Yeah, I've that's never true. Liked like, recitals. For as long as I've known you, you've never been a performer. No. The fact that we do YouTube is odd. Yeah. It seems like it goes against your personality. Well, have you seen our early videos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't really know why you ever agreed to it in the first place, but Well, it's something you really wanted to do. I was being I was being nice. <laughs> I was being, being a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was rough, man. It's still rough some days. But I do play the piano more than I had. And I think, too, as Samantha starts, well, one, one of these days, phasing out of naps, maybe. She loves her she naps. She loves her naps. But that'll open up a little more time. But I think at this point, like, the, she doesn't need one-on-one -on -one so much. And she can run around and play. And sometimes Benjamin and she and Benjamin will go up. We have a, a playroom upstairs. And they'll go up to the playroom and just, like, chill up there. And Aaron and I are like, what is this life right now? Yeah. Hold on. Monica's calling me back yellow we just had to figure out what kind of plants we were going to do some fall plants but i'm not sure i don't know we might plant some bulbs over there tonight or some perennials okay estella said with your hard water would it make a difference if you use the half inch drip hose instead of the quarter inch drip hose would it still plug up as fast on the hay racks yeah we can definitely try the half inch next year potentially um and do like individual emitters maybe those yeah i don't know we'll play with it Got to figure out something. Uh, Maria said, how come you don't have a dog? Tried that. <laughs> yeah, we did try that once. Um, no, you know, we've, we've thought about it a little bit. Um, you know, people ask the question, I, I, see, I have seen people ask the question about like, how do I keep my dog from X? And I feel like you just, you almost can't. Like gardening and dogs might not mix depending on what dog you get if you happen to get a really well-behaved dog maybe an older one or just a, a, well a breed that's dog. yeah well trained or you spend a lot of time training them like you have mm -hmm. the time to put into it which we do not which we don't and so i i don't know that it's we don't have a dog for the same reason we do not free range our chickens yeah like you know we make our living from making videos about gardening and kind of want your garden to look good or you know not damaged from an animal anyway right because that's under our control yeah um but you know weather and stuff that's out of our control we can't we can't do that but yeah i you know and who knows or I is mean, it out of our control oh jeez, aaron come on 
Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't want to say, say we'll never have one. I grew up with dogs and I love animals. I worked at a vet clinic for five and a half years. I do love dogs and cats and all the things, but, um, and the kids may want one at some point and which case we'll probably consider it, but it's a little bit, you know, it's hard to think about those things too when you have little kids at home and you're working full time and you've got a lot, a lot of things going on. I just couldn't think about adding one more thing to have to train and watch and take care of. Next video was September Garden Tour Part 2 and that one was an hour long. Mm -hmm. It actually got uploaded late uh, because there was a glitch on YouTube's end. Yeah, YouTube just didn't... Pro so when you upload a video, YouTube has to process it in their servers. So they process the standard definition version and then the high definition and then the 4K version. And it just didn't even do the standard definition version. I've had it before where all it will process is like standard definition uh -huh. and then it just looks blurry. That's pretty rare. But anyway, it just didn't... You know, and I upload the video so late at night, typically the night before, that I don't wait around for it to process but i almost never have an issue but mm -hmm. it didn't process yeah and we didn't know because we were asleep <laughs> so as soon as we realized like i woke up and usually what i'll do first is i'll check i don't uh, read through all the comments right away but i'll read through the first few that have come in and See if, if there's, there's a, any major mistakes yeah if there's a problem uh like you guys somebody will let us know um if something didn't get edited out or whatever yeah. and there's like that fear that some someday we'll screw up you know yeah and and it'll, it might happen one day. I don't know. So I'll usually just go in through. In case you're wondering, we do put our best foot forward in videos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If we disagree about stuff hard. Yeah. Like we'll put little disagreements out, but we don't put our, our big disagreements out because, you know. Yeah. Just why? know that whenever you're watching people online, it's like the, it's what they want you to see. It's the we best don't put version the, of themselves. We don't put the train wreck side of ourselves yeah. out there because, well, I don't want the drama, but. Well, that and, was a good fight. Let's go ahead and upload that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great money yeah <laughs> that was a money fight right there uh anyway so i will know like right away if there's something wrong but i got on and i'm like where's the, there's no video there's yeah. no video to even like just make sure so i woke you up yeah <laughs> video's not out maybe we should put a little message out so we put a message out that that there was a, an issue and usually if we know we're not going to upload we'll we'll put a message on youtube community and possibly on facebook and I try to put something on Instagram just for those of you who kind of like it's a part of your routine, which thank you. That's amazing that it's become part of your routine. But uh, I want to let you guys know, like Labor Day, we took off and yeah. we'll let you know if we we plan on it, uh, which I don't know about next week. So it's Aaron and my 17th anniversary coming up this weekend. Um, and we might skip a day. It just depends on how yeah, this week skip goes. Monday. Possibly. We'll let you know, though. We'll post about it. Um, if there won't be a video, but if you see one that's like, it's just a d random day and there's been no post, that's because there's been some kind of an issue. Not, yeah, on the computer end of things. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that one was a long one. We went through the south garden, we went through the cut garden, we went kind of to the vine crop area, the dirt lands, <laughs> as yeah. the kids refer to it. Uh, Bob, Bob and Martha said, I love how the wildlife distracts you. Yeah, the butterfly. I remember that. The monarch came but Again, through. the best year yeah, for wildlife. It has been. Um, my question is, is it best to grow hydrangeas in the ground or are, they, or, or are they okay in pots? You know, I think things that get large, like shrubs and things like that, you could absolutely grow them in pots and have great luck with it. Uh, I think that in the end, they like to be in the ground the most because they have the most room for root spreading. They're not constricted. Um, they're also, it's usually a little bit more consistent in terms of water. Um, and then winter care is much easier, but I do have hydrangeas in pots right now mm -hmm. and I like the way they look. So it just keeping that in mind, you know, make sure that you've got either drip set up to them or a consistent way to water them, um, that you've got a plan in place for winter care and they're not going to look pretty in the winter. So like either pop them out and get them in the landscape or put them somewhere where they're protected. Uh, Penny said, how does your compost ground cover have to be, uh, how deep does your compost ground cover have to be to drown out weeds. I don't think there is a depth you can go to drown out weeds with a compost top mulch. It certainly cover. helps though. It does. I mean, I suppose it helps with what's there, but things mm -hmm. will still seed and root in and grow on top of that compost. Kathy said, will you cut it back before you move the hibiscus? Does it get moved in the fall or spring? Beautiful plant. I need to move mine. You know, the best thing to do probably for that plant, there was a, there's a big evening rose, right? Hibiscus. It's at the end of our like limelight prime um, 
hedge mm -hmm. and it's just a little bit out of place where it's where it's planted and it's out of place in terms of color palette out there it's just it almost looks red like it brings that red element in there mm -hmm. that just jars my it's a, a warm pink like a really warm vivid pink and then i've got very cool colors around it and it's just not doing it for me right there i think the best thing would be to cut it back um, I think they recommend cutting it back in the spring hmm. or like the late winter, early spring. And when you do that to leave the stems like six inches high so the water doesn't go into the crown and freeze it, we typically clean ours up in the fall and we'll leave them up a little bit higher. And then I think a, an early spring transplant is probably the least risky on the plant. But, and that might be what we do because mm -hmm. it's, I'm not in any hurry to put anything in its spot so we could leave it and can then move it. Can you divide them? I think you can. Right. We should give it a shot with that one. Just Maybe. try. Maybe. I've never tried it before. Most perennials, uh, like grasses and stuff, like eventually you'll need to divide them right. to keep a healthy plant. Yeah. I don't know on a hibiscus. Have you guys divided a hibiscus before? Hmm. Hmm. Laura McCoy said, Mad drone skills, Aaron. Such beautiful footage. It was pretty. How long did it take Aaron to master the use of the drone? Not long. You know, the very first time that I got a drone, you remember that Christmas you bought me one? The Phantom 3, I think it was, or 2. And um, I forgot to take the... There's like a little protective cover on the camera to, and it stopped it from being able to move around. Oh. And I was like, this is junk. And it was kind of <laughs> shaking. And I was like, man, I guess drones just aren't quite there. Yeah, what kind of <laughs> drone then, did you get me? Yeah, and then I realized, oh. But yeah, like I feel like... You know, the most common shot is a parallax shot where you keep something, you know, center focused and you fly around it, like a 360 around so it. So like this is what you're focusing on, but you're kind of flying yeah, like this, but keeping your focus on that. Yeah, on yeah. the middle. I feel like that's like one of the most interesting shots you can take. And um, you basically just like put your thumbs in the center, like just move them, move them both, move the joystick both in the center and you just get the shot. To me, like... It's not intuitive to me really? at all. N neither is, like, uh, Benjamin wants me to do, like, Minecraft with him. Mm -hmm. oh, and I, Well, first of all, it makes me dizzy. Like, motion sickness, because yeah. <laughs> it's all over the place. That's always made you motion sickness, yeah. though. Games but, like that. Um, like, moving my thumbs to make things go. I mean, if I was doing a parallax, it'd be like, I'd start out, and then I'd, whoop, <laughs> like, end up way in space somewhere. It just, like, I really don't have a lot of interest in, like, gaming and, yeah. and the drones, so... Um, that could be part of it, but uh, yeah, you're you're good at that. Like your brain just well, works you. that way. Um, Mrs. Paulson said, "Are you concerned about black widow spiders in any other parts of the garden? Thinking about all the vines and raspberries? No, not really. I mean, like a healthy fear. Healthy fear, I suppose. Like I'm gonna get ready to harvest our pumpkins and things here fairly soon, and I know they're in there, so I'll just be careful when I go about it. It'll be a slower process, but." Live your life, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most people would probably, I'm assuming, spray and get rid of the black widows because it can, you know, they can make you pretty sick. Um, and I just haven't this year. I just really did not want to spray any pesticides this yeah. year. And I've seen so many good things come from it. And I don't want to upset the ecosystem that yeah. I'm like trying to create. So I don't know. We, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out a balance there because, I mean, you don't want to create an ecosystem that's like, like making all these poisonous things boom. Right. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about a lot. And they're, thankfully, they're not aggressive and they're not going to run after you or try to get you. Or even if you're close, like I'll see one and I like one will be right here. Like pretend that's a spider right there and there's a tomato. I'll harvest that tomato. I'll put my hand right by it and it's not going to run at my hand. The only time they'll bite you is if they feel pressure. Like if I came in and like put my hand on top of it, it might bite me if I'm putting my hand like physically on it. But as long as I know they're there, I can harvest all around it and I'm not freaked out by that. I won't let the kids in there though to do it. And that's the one thing, like once they get a little bit older and can like pick up the heft of the pumpkins, they might enjoy getting in there and harvesting. So I might like even this year kind of inspect the area and let mm -hmm. them pick some of the peripheral ones around the edges. They might enjoy that. Kristen said, the time and attention you both spend on your garden shows in its glory and splendor. Can you say if uh, the Niagara Falls Panicum spreads in the garden? I know it is a proven winter, but since it's a grass, I'm worried I will have a million of them. I have not experienced that with any of their Panicums. So, I mean, the Niagara Falls, this is only our second season with them in the ground, but I didn't notice them spreading at all from last year, uh, and I haven't noticed any popping up. 
around them. Does Pure Winter Chili sell anything well, that spreads? Well, I mean, the Budlia, vigorously? the Pugster series, is not a sterile butterfly bush. Oh. So I suppose that one would. Burning bush, they do mm-hmm. sell those, and they're restricted in a lot of states. Not ours, but in a lot of states. Virginia Creeper. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that that one like sprouts everywhere. It just spreads everywhere. They sell that, and yeah. it's not restricted in our area. And it doesn't. it's not invasive here either, but it is in a lot of spots. So... I mean, I suppose it could be a thing, but I've never experienced that here. Maybe in a more wet climate yeah. where it's getting the moisture it needs to seed itself and, and sustain its life, uh, it might work, but it's too dry here around, you know, we have to target water everything. So Nancy said, I would love to hear about your beginnings on your place. Were you there before the neighbors moved in? Is it family property? How many acres? Oh boy. Um, so the property we are currently on uh, we bought in 2016 mm-hmm. from family friends. We are the fourth owners of it. Um, the b- bulk of the house, not the bulk of the house, part of the house was built in 1919. And the barn was built prior to that. So where we're standing here is over, like well over 100 years old. And then there was an addition put on the house in the 80s. We have, uh, after picking up a few properties around us, we have about eight acres um, and the, the subdivision that's next to us, we, when we moved into this house and no houses were built yet, but we knew they were going to be. So we knew that a, a subdivision. The road was there. It kind of looked like yeah. a runway. Yeah. Yeah. So it was all like the infrastructure was already set and it, that was not news to us. We knew it was going to happen. Um, so I see comments every once in a while, like it's a bummer. You have houses coming up all around. Well, it, we knew it was going to happen. So it's not. It's not part of our decision of and buying the house. Got, no, nice neighbors mm-hmm. like every single one of them we have no neighbor issues whatsoever it's wonderful um what else that's about it yeah yeah Paige said maybe i missed it but when and if you choose to do you cut back the sage and lavender with enough time for it to bloom twice um the sage the russian sage russian sage we don't cut back in the middle of the season that's just a like late fall or an early spring chore Lavender, you can shear it back in the like midsummer and it'll typically bloom again. We don't shear ours though, and it just pushes new blooms around the old ones and it looks nice and full and healthy. Uh, last video for this week was planting the first trees on the new property and uh, some 2024 lilacs called Bloomering Per Pink. Aaron said, Looks like Aaron is slowly realizing his dream of being able to look out and only see trees. Do you think you'll remove the fence between the maples and the new property at some point? Well, uh... It's it hard flood. to say. Yeah, it depends on how we use that that property. Yeah, which we don't know. I mean, we've said pasture. We've said yeah, because like I wouldn't mind having a couple cows or something, and if we can, you know, have them graze on yeah grass or whatever. A couple of cute sheep out there with the yeah. little the white so ones with the little black face. It just is gonna. What we do know is that we want. You know, everybody kind of wants privacy. Uh-huh. I feel like so that's like a really reasonable thing. Like, well, we've got this fence line Mm -hmm. uh so let's put a bunch of trees and evergreens to you know make it more private Mm -hmm. so we'll just do that first and then let all the other things percolate you know we've got a lot of things at some point we would like to remodel the house i just don't see that happening like i know i you know and i'm happy with our house there's a lot that needs to be done i mean we've talked happier with our house now than i was yeah because of the like the landscape around it, it's like yeah. kind of coming into its own, and trees are starting to grow. And um, maybe we just keep like masking the view of our house with big trees. It's the art of distraction. Art of distraction. <laughs> yeah. It's just what what gets me about our house is the asymmetry. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Yeah, that's what bothers me the most. Yeah, I, you know, inside it's comfortable. Yeah. I mean, our carpet is a disaster. Well. Yeah, but that we could we could do like a, a our kitchen is fix. very dated. Yeah, you know, it's just a lot like, of things are it's dated. White glossy paint over you old know, cabinets. Old cabinets that you guys kinda, see. I mean, yeah. we take you into the kitchen every once in a while. It but looks it's... it looks good, but it's uh, you know if you get close, you can see that none of the cabinets line up, none of the handles line yeah. up. You know, it's just one of those. But you guys know where all of our money's going. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all of I mean, we just like dump all of our money back into our garden. Right. Um, and that's that's fun to do. Yeah. And the kind of renovation that we would want to do in our house would require us moving out of the house right. for a while. Um, it's not something because I mean, we have to tear down walls and rewire and do all kinds of stuff. And it's not something that you can really live in. Yeah. Or, I mean, that would be difficult. 
Well, it'd be difficult for the people coming in to do the work too, to work around us. Right. Yeah. I think it would be slower, probably slower process, but anyway, um, yeah. Next comment. Is this Aaron's tactic to his planting rhyme? Plant too low. It won't grow. Plant too high. It might die. No, plant high. It won't die. Yeah. (laughs) Plant low. It won't grow. Right. Yeah. And you certainly are. I mean, it's way easier. We were talking about it because, you know, we planted those first two trees, the hornbeams. Yeah. Maybe by the time you watch this, you'll see the other ones that have gone in. The only in, thing but... I am a little bit worried about is I almost feel like we need to be staking some of these things because we're really not. They're not anchored into a hole. They're not well. anchored into a hole. Well, Paul is asking. He's like, do we need to tie all these things up? And I told him, well, prob- probably. Yeah, I yeah mean... we might need to put some t-posts out there which isn't hard to do and you no. don't need to put the t-posts down very you know i mean they'll stay for far. six months maybe one growing season yeah and then... once it starts to root in it'll be yeah fine. rosemary time said you know what uh, this means more tree shopping dates for yeah. laura and aaron i'm wondering if horses will eventually come to the new barn that's been talked through the years i would love that and i know a lot of you seasoned horse people out there like be prepared like prepare yeah. yourself because it's a ton of work it costs a lot of money you got a lot of stuff going on i know yeah. Like, and we're going slow about everything that we're doing. Um, it feels slow to us. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's a lot of people who will just, like, kind of slap something together and yeah. create a structure for, you know, something to live in. And I want, like, I want there to be nice stalls and, you know, things yeah. like that in place before we, we jump into something like that. But it has been a childhood dream of mine to have horses. Um, and I, I would love that. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I have no idea. I think the kids, it's, it'd be fun for the kids too. Yeah. I, for Samantha especially. Benjamin might get into it. I don't know. Do you know what I love about our kids is that they love being home. Oh, so much. You know, we take them out places mm-hmm. and they, they enjoy it, but they also really love to be home. And that's kind of like a, a nice thing. Like you want to create a space for your kids that they really enjoy being yeah. in. You know, I see kids who like when their parents tell them it's time to go, they'll, they'll throw a fit. Yeah. Like they do not want to go home. They're having fun doing what they're doing. And ours are like, okay. Yeah. Like, all right, see you guys. Peace out. Right. <laughs> like they just, you know, wherever we are, they're just ready to come home and yeah. Although when we were on the coast, Samantha's like, can we go home now? Yeah. I think it was around the sleeping arrangement. She's not right. used to not sleeping in her own stuff and it ended up fine, but that like kind of kills you a little bit. Yeah. Like, oh, you just want to be home because I'm a homebody. I know how that feels. have a reference of how far away home is. Yeah. They're just like, let's just, I don't understand why we're not going home. Yeah. Can we go home now? <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, Stacy Taylor said, so nice to have that much room for trees. I love your choices. Do you know how many trees you have now on your property? It, would you include like what I mean? You wouldn't include all the North Poles, right? That's a hedging. That's an, a hedge evergreen, so it's not really a tree. Yeah, no, I probably wouldn't call like that larger a... evergreens and and deciduous well, trees. Yeah, like at what point? What is a tree? Something that provides shade, I think, in some capacity. Sure. I think, or that has like a certain height to it. Like 15 or more, 15 feet or more, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So if you went with like, like a tree, log shrub is 10 to 15. Trees that, well, the North Poles can get 12 to 18 feet. 10 to 15 feet. 10 to 15. You're probably right. I don't know. Let me double check. It's been a long time since I looked up the stats on that one. But if it's 10 to 15, I think that they'll get every bit of 15 feet here. North Pole. Let's look. 15 feet by five feet. 10 to 15 feet tall. That's yeah. What it says for I'll bet height. they'll get, they'll get 15. So I feel like that's a tree. Yeah, but it's not really a tree. It's just like a... Either way, well over 100. A lot, yeah. Carolina said, will you always need to keep watering those trees or until they're grown? Does your neighbor have to water his big trees right there? I'm not sure if they've got like drip running to their big trees there or not. Yeah, we'll probably run drip for quite a while. Yeah. We've got a couple trees that we don't water, like big established trees. Oh, like water specifically? Yeah, like yeah. our ash tree in the driveway. Yeah. We don't water that, huh. and it stays nice and green, yeah. so it's getting water from somewhere. I mean, the roots, who knows how far they've gone. Yeah. They might be picking it up from somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have to drill that. Like, when we put the well in, we didn't have to go that deep to hit water. No. So, it, yeah. It no, I'm like, I hear, um, like, I think our, our well is, like, between, like, 30 and 50 feet deep. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I hear people drilling, like, a 1,000 feet or... Or more. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. To, to hit water. 
how much would that cost? I don't know, but I I want to say that like our water table is fairly. I mean, I've also heard of people like ten feet. Um, yeah, in like Michigan, being <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, we just went down fifteen feet, and there yeah. it was. You know, like for some people, building a basement is impossible because the water table is too high. Dang, I can't even imagine that. It's crazy how different. Yeah. areas are. Yeah. Wendy Cash said, I know that before you did a ton of planting on the South Garden, you did a lot of infrastructure with water lines and electrical conduit for future plans. Are you going to do the same on the new property? Yeah, eventually. eventually. <laughs> right now it's so just, you know, one phase. It's like one water line that, mm -hmm. you know, feeds these trees. So it's pretty basic, but eventually we'll do electric and yeah, I don't know when. Yeah, but. it's kind of nice that we're not like, there's no rush to do anything out there. Um, so it's just nice to have the space and it's been to have the uh, high tunnel right there. Oh, that was such a, a nice thing. A yeah. nice, nice thing to have there. Oh. Uh, Mary Ram said, have you ever thought maybe you could use that property to have Benjamin or Samantha build the homes there? I always have thought it would be wonderful to have my children close by and which then I have my grandkids close to. Benjamin says he'll build something. He can't. Yeah. We can't build um, homes because of the way it's zoned, both the Dirtland property and the South Garden. <laughs> the Dirtland. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, because they're zoned like urban growth development, we had to have for the South Garden, we had to have a shadow plat. Mm. Is that what it's called? Yeah. It's like a, like a future plan in place uh, for how it would be subdivided because that's what urban growth development, that's what they want to see um, if it ever like was to sell to a developer or whatever. Or um, if we wanted to develop it. Or if it. we wanted to develop it. But that's the reason why we've been picking up little pieces because we kind of wanted to hedge ourselves in. I mean, it does, for us, it's our livelihood and the livelihood of our employees as well. Um, so, you know, hedging ourselves in and kind of creating that little bubble around ourselves is nice. But we had to even meet with like the fire chief right. um, because we were thinking of maybe putting a structure out in the South Garden, like a larger one, a barn or something, which clearly didn't happen. But we had to plan it out with the fire chief to make sure that it was within the proper distance from the nearest fire hydrant and got that all approved and everything. It was a, it was an easy process. It was yeah. just a process. Well, and if we, if we put um, a structure out there, it would have to fit within one of the lots. Right. You have to show how... You, you know, can't this just is plunk your, it anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like if you were to put the subdivision in, you know, this barn needs to be like in someone's backyard. And it um, needs to fit within the lot, like in a... Yeah, so if we put a barn up in the Dirtland property, it'll probably be a pole barn. I'm guessing we're not. Yeah. It won't be a foundation sort of situation, um, which is fine. Yeah, it's interesting having to work around those kinds of things. Yeah, we're just you know we're right on the edge. We are of it's the city good in so, so many ways. Yeah, it's really positive here. in a lot of ways. It's negative in that you know cities grow. Ours yeah. grows very slowly. Yeah, and there's so. tons of opportunity. Like land that's just sitting there wanting to be developed like they're yeah. trying to sell it to developers and nobody wants well, to do I mean, anything look at, <clears throat> like our the subdivision next to us mm -hmm. i mean we've been here since 2016 and it's like 75 percent full maybe yeah you think it's 75 or two like maybe two-thirds full i don't know it's very slow it's it's, it's slow very though. slow so mm -hmm. that that's been um seven years mm -hmm. and you know so it's not like you know our town is booming yeah I think that, that was the last question. Huh. So that's it for today's recap video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're having a really good start to your week. I'm going to go plant some stuff right now. See you guys in the next video. Bye.